Oh, hey, it's the webinar. My God, welcome to the webinar from C9 Hotel Works. Hi, and delivering Asia communications. We're going downtown. There's 8 million stories in the naked city. We're going to get to some of those. So we only got five. We've got four from Bangkok. We've got one from somewhere else. So this is pretty exciting con today. Thank you for attending. And we'll be sending a video of this session afterwards. So here we go. So we First stop, we're going to Chinatown. And we're going to visit... Chinatown? Yes. And we're going to visit Kun Chan and cool. David Johnson at Asai Hotel. Okay. I want to know more about Asai. Let's find out what's going on there. Over to you, David. Hey, thanks, Bill. Um, Great to be here, and uh, we're amongst the garden today. I'm here with Kun Champ. Champ is the founder of Asai. Hi, Champ. Hi, how's it going? Uh, very, very good, very well indeed. We're actually just enjoying um, a Bloody Mary here, just to, just to kind of get things moving, just to get a little bit funky in funky town. Um, and we're going to show you exactly the relevance of this in just a moment. Um, so, Champ is a, is, is full name is Siradet um, Devanovic. Yep. How did I get that? That's fine. Quite poor, I think. <laughs> um, actually, about eighty percent. Okay. Um, and uh, and and for any and for anyone um, who's who's uh, who's um, watching from Thailand will understand uh, this is a family, a very important family in Thailand for the Dusit Group, starting with Dusitani, moving to Dusit International, and then to this brand Asai. Um, so Champ is third generation uh, in this in this group. So hey, Champ, um, why why Jalan Grung? Why this particular district for this hotel? I mean, well, I mean, this town, I mean, this district here is such an amazing part of culture. As you know, there's um, you know uh, the Chinese immigrant came here, and there's like you know like this district is kind of like subdivided into different um, you know like sub Chinese culture. Yeah. Right. You get Daju, you get um, you know you you get uh, Jean Cat. That's what we you know we call. Um, and then um, you know, and you get like the Vietnamese that also came here. You got all these beautiful colonial buildings, um, and and so that's all these amazingly colorful parts, yeah. right? That you can see here. The food is absolutely great. You can yeah. go to different, you know, many kind of sub district that I just mentioned about, and get different food from different regions of China, and they actually specializes Very in cool. that way, which I think is really amazing. But you know what? What I really love more is also not just about the amazing colorful parts, but also about the really much the present kind of like fabric of the whole neighborhood yep. as well. Uh, mainly because of the fact that, you know, like rent around here is quite cheap. So just like, you know, East London back in the days, 20, 30 years ago, um, you know, where a lot of the creative uh, people would actually move in, the young generation right. actually start moving in, making this whole area very vibrant and dynamic. And you can see this, the difference between this, you know, old colonial, um, historical past living among this really cool, funky, um, you know, new, colorful district of the Chinatown area, and that's why like, I think you know, for us being a new generation, um, you know, of uh, the hotel brand, um, anyway, uh, you know, we thought, you know what, there's there's no better representations of who we are than this district. Nah, sounds sounds absolutely excellent. So you know, you're in a funky district, um, you know, it, it's a gentrified district, but it, but a district with um uh, with with a really amazing history and culture yeah. um, so how do you bring that into the hotel yeah well I mean I mean you know we try to um, obviously uh, you know create um, you know the, 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 the local flavors um, you know or the interior designs or the architect you know into the hotel of course we want the hotel to be quite progressive to be you know forward thinking to be quite modern um, you know young as well um, but 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 you know we still love um, you know this vibrant in color I mean you can see here we have um, you know this beautiful shades um, you know, uh, that kind of like represent a little bit like a Chinese, an old Chinese theater almost. Um, this is an installation in which we did during our launch two weeks ago. It's only going to be up for an, an, another week. Um, you know, we got all the fabric from, um, you know, from around here. Um, and, and this is something that we will continuously try to do, you know, to, right. because we believe that the hotel these days, like, it should constantly evolve the whole time. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so this is what we kind of been kind of mopping inside our own property. Amazing. Yeah. Opened just two weeks ago. Any yeah. particular reason you chose uh, um, this time to open? <laughs> I mean, the building's ready, right? I mean, I mean you're yeah. ready to go. I mean, I mean, I mean, for us, um, actually, we, we opened a month ago last week. So, okay. uh, but yeah, I mean, still like a really, really crazy time. Um, simply because of, um, you know, I mean, we have a lot of staff here. And to be honest, yes, there's some domestic uh, market, also very, very, very low. We've been planning this brand for the last three and a half years, and we thought, you know what, if not now, then how long are we going to wait for, right? Yeah, we yeah. can't just wait for life to just pass us by. Um, <laughs> you know, we have to take opportunity um, to come up with also, you know, exciting new things for yeah. our 
you know, domestic market. It's not just about waiting for the international arrivals to come, but how do we create interesting content programmings, um, you know, whether it's food, whether it's, um, you know, the wellness events that we basically host here in this, this you know, beautiful courtyard that we have to create something that attracts the local uh, market because they need something like this yeah. too. They, think, they want to experience thing something that's new. super cool. Thing that's yeah. super cool because it it's almost becomes a social center. It's yeah. not just a hotel for people coming into Thailand. Yeah. It's a social center exactly. for people um, enjoying and, 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 and hanging out. Yeah, what's, the, what, what's the what's events have you been doing here? Oh man, we've been Give doing like, a, lot of, like, a lot of wellness, um, you know, events. We, we we we've done a cacao ceremony uh, here. We've done sound healing, okay. sound therapy with the crystal bowls, with the gong. Um, you know, we basically hosted, um, you know, the Silipakon, which is one of the leading, um, you know, like art, um, you know, university. Have hosted uh, the Creative City. Um, you know, looking into the uh, the ancient techniques of making. Um, you know the um, the Chinese mooncakes um, here, where cool. we have live cooking class in yep. the middle of this courtyard, um, and we have had just a lot of parties uh, <laughs> during, during. I mean, during our launch, we nothing wrong with that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, during our launch, we we, we basically collaborated with um, you know uh, Jared and Paolo, who's you know our close friends and our close collaborators with um, you know Chef Bo and Dylan from Bolan, um, you know, to, to basically and we, we you know we, we we brought in Hendrix Gin to come and sponsor us and, and we just threw this amazing um, you know like party and I think that's what that's what you know like the, the local needs also you know yeah. they, they want something fun, something collaborative, something that you know kind of in, in a way bring the community together because you know we've been missing that for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, 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 creating a real social hub. That's great. Um, yeah. And tell us a little bit about this courtyard. So just to be, I mean, you can't see, but it's, uh, how many stories are we? Six, seven stories up. It's, not, it's, it's like this, eight stories up. It's like, it's like this, um, Sodium. And so, and, and this, this is a really, really cool space right in the center here. Um, yeah. So tell us a little bit about this and tell us a little bit about what we have in front of us here. <laughs> no, I mean, like, you know, at first we were, you know, like, I mean, when we took this hotel over, we thought, you know what, this is such an amazing area. It was going to be turned into, um, you know, a Chinese fountain, which is cool too. But we thought, you know what, like, I mean, aside for us, you know, we want, and and, and, and I truly believe, our team also truly believe that, you know, um, the, 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 the new generations of hotels needs to represent something that is meaningful, right? That's something that connects people um, than more than just purely, you know, transactional, yeah. um, than just purely just on like, just on the brand kind of surface. Um, so we thought, why don't we turn that into, um, you know, just an ordinary fountain into an organic farm? You know, where we can actually use it as a platform to teach our, you know, young, um, you know, chef, um, you know, of, you know, obviously not only about the food preparation, but also about the food production at the same time. Yeah. You know how to take care of that supply chain. Um, so we actually use, uh, you know, I mean, this is a real life farm that we use, um, and that's what you can see. Is some of them, I mean, we've basically been rotating them as well, so it's not all, you know, a hundred looking a hundred percent like what we have here, in, you know, in in front of us. But you know, just to basically makes people become connected to not only eating the food that is right in front of them, but where they actually come from. Um, and I think, you know, to make, you know, our, our cities, you know, our urban kind of dwelling a better place, we should think more about having this urban farming because I think yeah. that for us is a solution. Um, so, you know, we just want to get that conversation going and that's why, you know, in this prime space, in the middle of a lobby, we choose to have this. No, I, lo farm. I love it. Well, let, well let's put this um, urban farm, organic farm, to work for us. What exactly do we have here and how can we uh, um, do something with so it? This is, this is a sawtooth. Um, it's uh, a what, sorry? Sawtooth coriander, sawtooth. or long coriander. Okay. So it's got this really beautiful, um, lovely um, aroma. So it's actually okay. going super well with, um, you know, the Vietnamese noodle pho. Yeah. Um, you know, and which, which you can actually put into pho. But I mean, you can put it in the Bloody Mary too, actually. You can just, you know, kind of like just cracks it, opens a little bit. So it gives that beautiful sense of aroma. How about um, that? Yeah. How about it's that? Really, and it's really, really delicious. What a, what, what, what a, what a great idea. And yeah. on that note, everyone, um, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, um, Amazing. Jam, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Likewise. Back to you, Bill. Cheers. 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 Oh my God, Bangkok is, you know, everything's flooding. Thank God in Bangkok it doesn't snow though. My God, think of that happening. I know, but we're still we're stuck in the floods. Where it, can we go? It's dinner time. I don't know. I don't want to be a disappearing guy. I'm pretty hungry. You know, what are we going to do for food? I know. Oh, oh sorry. Oh. I, I don't think we can have that, right? <laughs> no, but I do know a great Mexican restaurant around here. Wow, okay. A great takeaway. But, uh, with chicken? Yes, I'm sure they have chicken. Oh, it's great. Tortilla cremada. Hi, everybody. I'm Chef Paul and Stevens. I'm from Hawaii. I'm a chef and restaurateur here in Bangkok. I've been living in Thailand for 20 years or so. 
Uh, doing the same thing as a chef, um, different businesses, also working for hotels, restaurants, member clubs. Uh, I've had a few of my own businesses as well, restaurants, and this is brother Alex, also from Hawaii. What's up? How's it, everyone? I'm Alex, uh, singing. I'm actually also from Hawaii, as the chef said. I was uh, raised in uh, Oahu. I was actually born Thai, so I came back in 2001, found uh, that I fell in love with my own second home, first home, whatever you want to call it. It's all home to me. Uh, I've actually been in the hospitality industry since I got here, and then a couple, of, a couple months back, you know, uh, chef asked me, let's do this adventure one more time, because we had it before, and I'll let the chef get into that a little bit later. And then here I am, now I'm acting as, and uh, representing my brother here. Mexican food. Back together again. Uh, can you tell us what are you cooking up right now? Uh, right now, so we're doing a little breakfast quesadilla over here. Uh, this is actually an off menu item. This is just one of our favorite things to eat to kind of get the day going. So we got some eggs in there, some chorizo, pickled jalapenos, uh, pickled red onion, a lacto ferment. Uh, pickle of carrots and banana peppers, garlic. So, like I said, it's not on the menu, but this is one of the things that we like to eat and turn to get things going in the daytime. And, yeah. So we we also got other breakfasts up on the menu. We got breakfast burritos, breakfast tacos, huevos rancheros, huevos montelenos. But this is something we go for in the morning time. So. One of my favorite stuff, really. Yeah, so these are what the, the vegetables here look like that are inside. These are, you have these pickled jalapenos. These are our own pickled red onions as well. These are our own lacto fermented carrots and banana peppers and garlic. And of course, we use really fresh tomatoes. Everything we do here is fresh. We make everything here. And uh, for what, all the way down from, from the veggies, all the way to the salsas, to the meats. All the, all, the, all the credit goes to the chef. Yeah, so I, I, I believe, for my own style anyway, running restaurants and running kitchens, I, I don't like to buy stuff outside. So everything you see, uh, everything that we can make by ourselves, we make by ourselves. So we do our own fresh cheeses, all of our salsas, all of our tortillas, all of our corn masa products are pressed out fresh from fresh masa cooked to order. So that, that's just my style. That, that's how I like to run things as a chef. I like to get the taste that I, I really want in there and I want to present. So the only way to do that is, is right here on two hands. That's how we do everything at Tortilla Quemada. Okay. That is how we do it. Why did, why did you decide to open this takeaway Mexican restaurant in the middle of COVID-19? Yeah, so that... I'm not crazy, okay? Like I, I wasn't planning on this. I, I didn't. I didn't look at the situation and say, okay, here's COVID. No, let, let's go open another restaurant and, and give myself more headaches or anything, right? Uh, it was kind of by accident. I, I had a friend looking to get out of the space, and uh, so you know, he, he gave me an offer that was too good to refuse. So I, I took it. You know, my my style of entre uh, entrepreneurship is, is kind of cliff diving. I, I see something that looks good, that's interesting, it has potential, so I just run and I make that cliff dive and I try to figure it out, you know, before we hit the bottom and go splat. But, so, so that's why, I wasn't planning on it. Um, I, I came, I took over the spot, then I realized I needed a concept to run in the spot. I wasn't trying to go with a, a big, full on sit down, anything like that. It, it was these times, Delivery and takeaway seemed to fit best to what was going on. One of the best things for delivery and takeaway is Mexican food. I know that I can make some pretty good Mexican food. If you don't believe me, you guys can come and check it out for yourself. Let us know. So it, it was just time to bring back the concept. You know, we, we did this 10 years ago in Phuket. I've been wanting to do it since 10 years ago in Phuket when we closed down. And here we are. We're, we we're back. To get it and we're doing pretty good, actually, too. Oh, yeah. We got a lot more. A lot more people from around the world giving us a lot of props on the on the, the, the quality and the techniques and the authenticity of the food. And for all I can say is like it's been that way since forget. So back, and we're gonna give that back to even some more people. Even people from, the, from that were that were in Phuket were actually here and, and 
of praising us and, and thanking us that we're back. You know, I, people gotta eat, right? No matter what, people gotta eat. So, you know, you got a lot of home cooks doing a lot of stuff right now. You've seen a big change in the industry towards people cooking themselves or people cooking and selling things outside. You know, but, but bottom line, pandemic or no pandemic, people gotta eat. So you make good food, we send it out to people. They don't have to worry about going out to a restaurant, sitting down around a bunch of other people, strangers. So it, it's working, it's doing all right. I have one last question today. Sure. Why are people so crazy about Mexican food in Bangkok? Yeah. All right. So I'm. I'm gonna let brother Alex answer this, so I don't get myself in trouble. The only thing I would say, real quick, to that is, I, you know, I think there's a lot of similar tastes in Mexican food and Thai food. You have a lot of similar ingredients. A lot of the ingredients used in Thai food actually originated in Mexico. If you don't believe me. Look it up. I'm sure somebody will try to skewer me out there and say, no, 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 Thais, Thais brought chilies to the world and Thai food is the original spicy food. It's not. I'm sorry to burst bubbles, but I, I think that's part of it. I, I think yeah. a lot of the same similarities in ingredients and taste, and if it's done right, it, it, it just tastes pretty yeah. damn good, right? Yeah. So. yeah. I think when, when people get into the, I guess you can call it the trend of Mexican food, you know, you kind of you kind of looking towards uh, what's real about it, how it's made. You know, what's fresh and, and what what the quality differentiates from one of the other restaurants. Uh, for us, uh, we keep it down to the roots, and then when people actually find out what it's actually like, they actually want more, and that's what that's what drives people to, to have really good Mexican food. You know, and. It takes people back, right? Yeah. How many customers have we had that come in here and oh. Oh, yeah. say, you know, we, we, we have yeah. Manny from Mexico who, oh, yeah. who looks <laughs> up at me and he goes, you know, are you sure you're not Mexican? Right? Yeah, we, uh, we get compliments like this. Yeah, we, we have people who come in, who uh, mm -hmm. other Mexicans as well, who say, you know, the food took me back to my hometown, yeah. say, eating barbacoa with my parents on weekends. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I, I think that's one of those things, um, Mexican food is one of those things that just holds memories to people, right? And then you eat that familiar food, you have that familiar taste, and it brings the memories back. And we, we seem to be doing that a lot of people, and, and we're humbled by that, you know? Yeah. To, to be able to take somebody back with your food, and take them on a journey back through memories, you know, that's, that's, that's a pretty humbling experience, so. Yeah, I yeah we're actually seeing a lot of I've seen a lot of different things also in, uh, about Mexican food and also Mexican vibe, right? So we're getting a lot of people that are that are liking that feel of the of our of our, of our I guess of our goal for, towards the whole uh, tortilla quemada brand. Okay, so I guess I'm yeah, hungry. I don't know that. about you guys, but I'm yeah. hungry. So this is the quesadilla, what it looks like here. We'll give you guys a little peek on the inside. Look at that, check it out. Check it out. So it's basically nice and gooey, and we got the cheese in there, we got the egg. We'll top this with some of our house-made salsas, and that's making my mouth water. So if you're not hungry yet, I don't know what to say. Goodbye, aloha, thank you for joining us from Tortilla Quemada. Have a great day, guys. Melania? Hey, welcome to the webinar, all the people of the world. You know, this is Donald Trump here, and of course, you know, this is the biggest webinar ever in the history of webinars. You know, I invented the webinar. You know, forget Gates, forget Jobs, all those other guys. Forget the scientists, because the webinars came from Trump, right? Just remember that, but I, I know, what about the news? The, you know, I'm starting to get crazy actually watching news. Melania, what, what do we think about the news? It's all fake. I, I agree, it's all fake, exactly. But for some reason, if something goes wrong in two weeks, I don't know. You know, I know people are going to vote for me, but if we have to leave America, where are we going to go? I know a place, culture and art, in Bangkok. Oh, Bangkok. I'd always wanted to go to Bangkok because, I don't know, America, maybe they... Maybe the ties, maybe maybe we can do a deal, maybe something else. But you know, I don't know if I go abroad, you know, you know, the scientists are gonna make me wear that, so I don't know. I'm gonna you know, let me go check on things here for a minute. We are going to ATT nineteenth to see Kunmuk and David Robinson. Now. Donald. Hi, welcome to Bang Rack. The part of Bangkok referred to as Old Town, but more and more becoming known as Funky Town. 
This is where, in the mid-1800s, commerce started. We had the first road that went from here to the palace. We had a number of embassies open up. Uh, we had the first hotel, the Oriental, the first department store. Even the first cinema was here, uh, the Prince. Uh, but there's, whilst there's a lot of new things here, a lot of people coming here to follow their dreams of new business, there's a lot of old as well. And I think it's that combination that makes this area quite unique. <coughs> We're here with Buk Atta Kawong, uh, who is uh, the owner of At 19, this establishment that she'll tell you about in just a minute. Let's go inside. Thanks, welcome. Lovely to have you. So, Buk. You grew up in this area. What was it like when you were a child? So my parents are actually antique business owners and they've been in the business for 45 years. So our first store is at the other, further end of Bangra. And I, my memory is mostly around there. And I used to spend pretty much every day minding the store with my parents. Um, and yeah, just seeing a lot of people coming in, an influx of foreigners, actually investors coming in to buy art antiques um, get their suit made, the wives get their, their beautiful silk dresses made, and also jewelry. And I just loved it so much. It, it was has always been a good creative district for me. Did you have your favorite place to eat? Yes, I always eat at the Pop Belly on Rice uh, store. Um, it's just opposite Assumption School in the Little Soy, and now they have a Michelin. So they're still there? Yes, they're still there. Oh, so there's many places that are there still. Yes. And many new places though. Many new places. So actually, um, even around there, the, the bookstore, it was it used to be the bookstore where the, uh, the grandpa ran it, and now the second generation have turned into a cafe. So it's a lot of, you know, just like me, I'm the second generation, that's why when we started this place, um, we turned the Chinese Thai school into what is at 19 now. So this is a school? Yes, it was a school. It was our neighbors actually for our third branch. And um, we took over and my, my father was an architect who stored the place, keeping the original teak wood. Um, and we ch uh, we turned the first floor into a retail with um, everything to do with lifestyle. Um, and there's a cafe, there's a chef table, and then upstairs I curate like a rotating exhibition um, supporting emerging artists. Oh, fantastic. So there's there are many people like you that have been in the area for generations, but many new people coming in as mm -hmm. well. How does that work? What's the dynamic like for It's been nice, actually. I think that the people that come here are really mindful um, of, of the area in general because we're very unique. We're the conjunction of the old and the new. We have, you know, the local way of traveling on the boat. Um, there's You can come by tuk-tuk. Um, and there's just like, Everything from how it used to be to to new cafes and new kind of sort of pop culture here as well. I think the people that come here are really mindful, um, and it's it's nice to see like the locals and the other generation mix and changing as well. I mean, I noticed that you've got a lot of uh, vintage clothing. Here. Yes. Now that's quite new, is it, for Thailand? It's quite a new mindset, I would say. What we try to do a lot here at, at Nineteen is kind of like shift that mindset. Of the taboo surrounding like secondhand vintage or antique items because in Asian cultures people are quite scared of those kind of things. But I, I really want to make people understand that actually it's a lot more fun if you have a conversational starter piece like what I'm wearing now is vintage, um, and it's just more, much more unique and better for the environment. And I think that's that's how we should be moving. Right. You know? yeah, the environment, lots of green space like you have here with your restaurant and cafe. Yes, we love our green space, just like how you walked in as well. Um, I think it's so vital that we have green spaces in Bangkok because we're such a big city and it's now being overtaken by high rise and we want you know, people to be able to have places to relax with, with nature as well. Uh, my favourite place of, of this area I think would have to be Jua, Tropic City, 8020, mm -hmm. this very sort of back, back street area. Do you have a favourite Haunt. Well, I love eating, so it's Mother's Mother's Roasters um, in Balat Noi, and I also love a uh, Tokyo Heart. So, look, um, Bangkok is a small part of Bangkok, mm -hmm. but even in this small stretch between BTS and Palat Noi, it's very different. As you said before, there's Bangkok Market, there's the uh, the old sort of shops and eateries and that end of Bangkok. Mm -hmm. And it's very different in this end of Bangkok. Yeah. So how, do you, how have you seen that develop? 
Mm. So when in the nineties, it was very much more about luxury. So it was you know up, more up, upper scale items like antiques and gold and and silk. Um, and then we we saw a change. The, the new central building that used to be a KFC that I used to eat when I was little. Oh. And now um, Central has now made it into a new culture. Oh. Yeah, it's very nice. And um, after that, then we see the Silver District that moved in. So there's kind of like, uh, I guess, very different types of businesses that mm -hmm. come and develop here. And then after the Silver District, then we have TCBC and then you know, you get to it at 19 to the house there, you know, the city, um, and it becomes a little bit more, I guess, about contemporary art. So, um, yeah, you kind of see the district age. The TCDC thing was really interesting. Yes. Very, very So different. the Thailand Craven Design Center moved from Sukhumvit to Angrak. Yes. Uh, they occupied the old, the Grand Postal Building, mm -hmm. and now they do an annual Bangkok a design, Bangkok week, design week, yeah. which brings hundreds of thousands of people into the yes. area. It's really, it's it's very successful, I think. We participate every year, and it's really nice to see, you know, from children to older people who probably didn't even know about the, the, the fair to begin with, but just came, um, to, to engage in creativity and engage in art. And I think it really opened it for the mass, because that's not really in our, our culture to really, really celebrate art. There's so much creativity in Thai culture, mm -hmm. in, in Thai people, but yeah. to bring it to the stage like that yes. really surprised people that there was so much I think, there. I think so, I think so. I think I think in our educational system we don't really value art as much. So but we are very creative people and we are the country with so much handcraft. And to be to to put it all together in one fair for everyone to see because it's not just people in Bangkok, it's from Chiang Mai, Chiang Mai, they all come down to Bangkok for that one week. Mm. Um, I think it's really worthwhile for the public to, yeah. to, to feel and to be inspired. And you get to go in some of these old buildings that are normally closed. Yes. The old French villas or the... Viola, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's lovely yeah. to be able to like, be in touch with history in that way. Yeah. Um, this is uh, the artist that we exhibited last year. He's, he had his first ever solo show here. He's Chinese and his name is Dani. So I just wanted to place it in a different setting than the exhibition that we had and, you know, kind of curate it into more of a home setting. Mm, lovely. Yeah. I mean, there's so much art in the area, particularly now. Yeah. Ai Weiwei opens at the end I'm of so the month. I'm so excited. So, so excited to see Ai Weiwei. But uh, Andy Warhol has been uh, showing the first exhibition of the original art, 128 Great pieces. Show. In fact, for the first 10 people who messaged me on Instagram, Creative District Bangkok, I have 10 tickets to Andy Warhol's exhibition that finishes November 24. Message me, be the first 10 and you'll get those tickets. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Mook, for taking Thank us through so and for giving us your stand on Funky Town. Oh my God, Bangkok, I can't believe it. Rainy season's up, but snow? I know, what's going on? What the hell is this? My God, I'm going to freeze to death on the streets of Bangkok. What are, where do we go? I know a place, I know a bar in, in Funky Town, downtown. You mean downtown? You mean down, down, downtown? Down, downtown. You mean down, wait, 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 downtown? Down, down 100 oh, bit oh, dive okay. bar. <laughs> yeah, down, 100 bit dive bar, let's yes. go. Hey guys, thanks for having me in the session for Funky Town, Bangkok. Uh, I'm Romain, I'm the owner of 100 Bit, my latest project. And we are live in Chinatown, the heart of Funky Town, Bangkok. Uh, here's a little background about me. I'm uh, actually a hospitality strategist. I'm also uh, conceptualizing restaurants and bars independently and for companies. Um, and I do this for the past probably 10 to 15 years in different projects uh, in Bangkok, in Paris, also in Los Angeles. Uh, why did I start to do this kind of project, especially the dive bars? Uh, it's always been the same passion, cheap beer, good fun and memorable moments. Uh, I tend to appreciate uh, the luxury uh, business and especially like all these bars and restaurants. Uh, I enjoy being there. I enjoy uh, experiencing new uh, uh, type of uh, food and beverage or music. Or, uh, but in the end of the night, uh, when the bill is too high, I tend to don't really want to come back. So I always tend to 
create my own project based on this statement, uh, having the most for the least, uh, and especially the best memory you can have uh, without breaking the paycheck. Um, I started to open dive bars with Soul Bar back about seven years ago, we were a group of friends. I had the idea to actually um, open a new live bar uh, in Bangkok, which was at this time very oriented DJ. Um, and my idea was, where do I want to go at night uh, if I don't want to see DJ? And there was a few jazz bars and a few old timers, but not a real funky place. So we decided to open Soul Bar to create a real black music uh, love letter. And it worked instantly for the past uh, six years. Uh, and then I moved on uh, to open Fujong, which was uh, a little bit different because where Soba was very a party-oriented type of project, uh, when I jump in my, my regular job and access more about the luxury uh, type of bars and restaurants, I started to understand a little bit more uh, what a different target would want to do. Uh, experience based on the same concept, the live music, the food and the beverage. Um, so to don't balance uh, uh, Soul Bar and to just complement it, uh, we created Fujon as a French bistro uh, with a live jazz bar and uh, a real high-end old-school cocktail like liquor, 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 uh, just to justify the price that we would charge. Uh, it went from a uh, uh, huge success instantly to some kind of legendary status. Uh, we didn't expect that, especially when we closed during COVID. Uh, we received a lot of love letters for us to reopen the bar, which is happening now. Uh, but personally, I had other expectations, especially because of the COVID. I remembered why I liked the dive bar so much. The dive bars backtrack in my life uh, uh, to the time that I was living in, in uh, Los Angeles, especially, or Chicago, uh, Detroit. I, I, I spent over almost a year in, in America, but traveling, mostly trying to settle somewhere, which ended up Los Angeles. But I have seen a lot of the places like San Luis, Detroit, uh, Cleveland. And what I appreciate with this second second zone cities, especially like Cleveland, especially like San Luis, uh, uh, Port, uh, uh, Newport, uh, very important for music, especially Memphis. What I always liked is that there was so many uh, uh, little bars with so much character, but always share the same trait. Cheap booze, great music, a very, very welcoming attitude. No fuss, no buzz, but a real mix of people that appreciate uh, the character of the owner. And that's uh, always what's come out of my project is that the owner. In general, I'm always there and people tend to come to, to meet me for that. Uh, doesn't mean that I'm always, always there. But uh, the idea is this, the spirit is, uh, is, is very important. And uh, you can find this in some bars in Bangkok. And when I came back uh, from US and I landed in Bangkok. Uh, I started to be around the people that open Moose uh, Bar in Ekanai or, or uh, Mellow and Bad Motel in Tonglo and uh, Shades of Retro, the new version in Tonglo as well. And uh, I, I, I get to, to meet uh, the real owner of the real uh, dive bars like Jam in Surasak or uh, 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 fatties in Ding Dang and, and I really love those places because they had real integrity and real uh, uh, power over the customer because they never lied they never pretended to be something they're not they were true to themselves and they expressed uh, what they like in life uh, so um, when I, I I reached the time that I would either not reopen anything and just follow up with, with Fujian or kind of transform one part of it into my own self, uh, my, my, my self uh, bar. Uh, I, I thought of this, I, I thought of this a lot and how can I do the ultimate dive bar for the post-COVID situation? People lost a lot, they had uh, a rough time, they needed to party, they needed to enjoy without killing the paycheck again. Um, and also how can I fit it into 
an environment that was uh, uh, coming back into a more underground scene. I, 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 I'm always been pretty underground. I, I, I've never been really mainstream type of person. Uh, not necessarily a hundred percent underground, but I always followed. I always liked it, and I thought that uh, the underground scene didn't have much of platform beside probably Jam. And, uh, Goja and a few really really cool bars but they were so far apart and especially not in Chinatown uh, since I live here and I love here I love Chinatown I live here for probably eight years now um, I wanted it to be close by to me because then if I had to spend some time it needs to be my second home and um, I started to think what would be my favorite bar and my favorite bar would be a retro bar because I love old music yes I'm old um, mainly 80s synth pop, electronic, post punk, heavy metal, glam rock, uh, but also like some some really uh, uh, electro punk like Miss Kitten and things like this that I never hear much in Bangkok. Uh, and coupled with that, I wanted to have a video game because that's my passion. I never really do it that much, but at home I love it so. This is what it becomes. Uh, it becomes like a club in the 80s in London playing Depeche Mode for the look, mixed with a true dive bar spirit, the part of Fujon that remains, uh, because the dive bar, again, it's a past glory that became a new glory, and the video game aspect with a lot of uh, digital art as well. And uh, This is how uh, I think I contribute to Bangkok scene, and especially the funky Bangkok scene. I wanted to... to to really put a, uh, an imprint of underground culture that is not necessarily too aggressive. Uh, it's very joyful, it's very party-oriented, party-like. And uh, I, I believe, uh, actually, I achieved something that uh, will remain in some people's memory. Not everyone, but some people's. And I, I hope to see you here, I hope you enjoy, and uh, I hope you, you, you embrace the concept of dive bar, because I think uh, in the whole bar scenes in the world, it's, it's a really uh, going missing element uh, from all capitals, like even New York, it's, it's gone one after another, and COVID have hit this scene hard, because this is a non-profit business almost. So uh, I wanted to really pay homage to, to the dive bar scene and create another great dive bar in Bangkok. I hope you enjoy my talk and hope to see you here and hope to meet you in person probably. Thank you very much. Hey, so we have a pretty long swim with all that water in Bangkok and you know, all that flooding. We, you know, I think we're swimming south. I don't know where we are, but hey, is that a waterfall? Let me swim over there. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Don't go chasing waterfalls, listening to the rivers and the... I know where we are. We are in another town, in Phuket town, and we're going to go see Tom, Super Tomo. Tom, here we go. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Tom, co-founder of Super Tomo. I'm coming to you semi-live today from Three to Shine, the center for vegetarian festival here in Phuket and I'm here today with my uh, town guru Kunum. Kunum say hi to the camera please. Hi, hello. Okay so let's walk towards where were we walking to? To the Ranong Road. So Ranong Road is kind of like the uh, capital city of the foodie scene in Phuket for vegetarian festival I would say. So when when does it take place this time? It's uh, from the. It's from the 16th of October until the 25th of October. Okay, so is it around this time every year? Uh, mostly. So somewhere around this time, right? It's not a fixed date because it's according to the lunar calendar, which I'm not sure when, but there is a lot of food. So uh, yeah, let's go see a lot of food. So where where are we going? Where which one are we going to see first? The first one that we gonna meet from here. It's a place that we are selling the uh, local food that we call loba. Okay. Normally, it's I really like loba, actually. <laughs> you know, right? Yeah, I know. I've eaten many pork. times. Yeah. But during the vegetarian festival, we change it to be the taro one or the chestnut one. Okay. So let's see uh, from this one. Okay. A lot yeah. of the people here. Okay. So, are we gonna go and get in line? <laughs> can we, we can go somewhere. Okay, we go somewhere first. Okay. So actually, 
Actually, there are lots of food in Phuket that I like. But you know, uh, I mean, especially this time of year in the vegetarian uh, festival, most of the restaurants will close and uh, they all participate in this, uh, in this event. As you can see from my background, most of them are uh, wearing white. Of course, it's the sign of uh, purification. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very nice. I've been in Phuket for, I think, four and a half, five years. And uh, you know, even though I don't, I don't eat, I mean, I, I don't uh, eat all vegetarian food, like for every meal, but yeah, I do, I do come and enjoy the food here every now and then every time there is an event. So, yeah. where are we going next? Okay. Otherwise, we can see some of other plants first. It's about the vegetarian food that we make absolutely look seems like the common food. Okay, sure, let's go, let's go see that. So let's see this. Normally we're talking about a vegetarian food, we don't have a fish or chicken or whatever. But look at this one. It just really look seems like the fish. Okay. Yeah. So in the past, like 20 years ago, that we cannot find some food like this one. But from the six or seven years ago, this one just come on, coming in and it gathered a lot of the people to join this festival because it's more uh, better to join this kind of the meal. It's okay. easier to eat, right? Yes. So you can see. But there's a lot of like very nice options. See? Wow. Ah, ah. So actually we are waiting in line for like this dessert shop that you say it's really good. Yes, but however it's long line so we're gonna stop at the first one that I said before, Loba. This is like a this is like signature dish. In Phuket. Like every time, everywhere I go I see this. Normally we do it for the pork. For example, intestine or the ear. Okay. Or the heart, intestine or whatever, but however in the vegetarian festival we turn it to be something like tofu, uh -huh. malo, uh chestnut. And now we're gonna buy it. So which one do you like best? This one. Yeah me too. Can you get some for me as well? Yeah. Back at the airport. Wow, what a strange place. I haven't been here for a while. I don't know. Where can we go? Is there another town? Another funky town? I think funky town. No matter where you are, you can go to funky town downtown. Today we've had art, we've had politics, we've had a little bit of fun as well. But also we've had hotels, we've had certainly going with, with culture as well. And we've also had Mexican food. So what a great day. I think, oh my, what's that? What's that? Is the earth moving? I heard something. I mean, no, it wasn't you. Oh my God, what is that? What? Oh, what? Oh, run, oh run! Oh my God! Oh. Which scene is that? Cultured. <laughs> that's, that's more Indian. <laughs> what do I do with this? Exactly. I'd No. no, no. <laughs>